data. Uh, what we saw, for those of you that did not see it, was a 2.7% increase in Hep B new cases in 2018, um, a 13.5% increase in Hep C cases in 2018 nationwide, and a 317% and increase in Hep A um, new cases nationwide. Uh, despite these new spikes in new cases, we have the tools we need to eliminate hepatitis. And just last month, the Center for Disease Control did list hepatitis on one of its winnable battles. Um, and for those of us doing this work a long time, we've been waiting to see uh, that as a winnable battle because many of us know that we have the tools and the ability to do this. We just need uh, the political will, the resources to bring all that together. So again, today, um, next slide, Thaddeus, we're going sure. to be... Sure. So real quick, Heather, can everyone hear Heather speaking? Some, um, someone said that they couldn't hear her. Yes. You can all hear her. Okay, great. Thank That's you. True. Great. No, thank you. Um, and so, as many of you on the line have been with us um, over the past year, uh, we just wanted to highlight some background before we get into the actual framework and strategy. So... We really acknowledge um, that despite our best intentions, we can't be as inclusive as we would like to be. Um, so we really want to take a moment to um, hold some space and honor all of those that have come before us, all of those that don't have a voice, and for all of those that will hopefully benefit from the work that you all do and continue to do. We are in an incredible time, um, not just in hepatitis elimination, uh, we have a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, protesting and struggle with Black Lives Matter and the strive for racial justice. Many of us here also believe that we can't have hepatitis elimination without racial justice. We're in the middle of a pandemic, um, though many of us also agree that we have been in an epidemic of hepatitis for a long time. And the echoes of this pandemic um, ring true to many of us doing the fight of this and many other infectious diseases. So given that context, just thought we would take a moment to really honor all those that came before us, our ancestors, the first people of this land, and really call upon all of that spirit to come with us today to help us deliver this framework for healing in Hawaii. Thank you. We have a quote uh, that really resonated with uh, Thaddeus and I and our steering committee that I'd like to share with you on the next slide. And despite my Hawaiian language education, I'm not gonna butcher this, but as you see, the translation really resonated uh, for us. And that the intersectionality of hepatitis and the no wrong door approach and understanding that no matter where somebody may be, living with hepatitis or at risk for um, that, the, the tenacity of many of the advocates on the line and uh, of Hep Free Hawaii to create that beacon of light um, so that everybody has a voice and a pathway to healing. Another way that we try to ground this strategy in Hawaii is to have our core values and I wanna thank again our, the Hep Free Hawaii Committee as there was an, an ongoing conscious effort to commit to these values at the beginning of every elimination strategy meeting. We believe in harm reduction. And as you see here to support practice and have non-judgmental approaches to public health and celebrating any positive change. We strongly believe in health equity, and again, believe that in order to get to reduce health disparities, that we, we must address the systemic inequities, racism, um, homophobia, and other oppressions that face people at risk for and living with hepatitis. Many of you saw our fabulous Thaddeus fam do the keynote speech uh, last year for the harm reduction conference here in Hawaii because he's the king of intersectionality. Not only are things related to things, but we understand that in order to have a comprehensive strategy to eliminate hepatitis, we must have those pathways clearly intersect in all the ways that the communities are impacted to ensure that the, nobody is left behind. 
And finally, to ensure that not only this plan, uh, but all of our efforts collectively to eliminate hepatitis in our community are really rooted in our deep love for Ohana, um, including our Aina, um, and to really um, look at how our Native Hawaiian communities are not only disproportionately affected, but hold the strength and resiliencies to the healing we need to eliminate hepatitis. And as a community, we strive to uh, bring all of this together and you'll see it woven throughout the strategy. Again, I wanna thank everybody who has participated because everybody has embodied these values as we have walked these, this path the last year together. So if we could take a moment to uh, have you put in the chat box where you're coming from. I know we have quite a few folks from the continent. We may have, have even a few international supporters. We're a very um, proud uh, participant of the World Hepatitis Alliance, and, want to, and, and as well as uh, many of our uh, colleagues from the continent. Please put in, where are you from? And then we'd also like to hear from you. Um, how long have you partnered with um, Hep Free Hawaii? So hopefully there's a poll that is up there on the screen that you can see. Can you see that Thaddeus, the poll? Yes, and go ahead and let us know if this is the first time with Hep Free Hawaii um, or whether you've been with us since 2011 when we started nine years ago. And then secondly, if you could let us know where you're zooming in from, whether you're coming from our neighbor islands, um, from the continent or abroad, we'd love to hear um, from you. That's great. So we have a wide variety of folks. Just looking at the chat, I see folks, wow, I see Wailuku, hi Brian, Utah, all right, Philadelphia, Bay Area, Tucson, California, um, Oregon, and a great, a lot of our neighbor island friends as well. And it looks like a, a good, um, I'm gonna give you about another 30 seconds to, to do the polling and then I'm going to end it. All right. Bunch of folks from Honolulu as well. And as you see, the majority of the folks on this line have been with Hep Free Hawaii one to five years. Um, we have a few folks um, that are new and um, a few of you that have been with us potentially since our beginning. So that's exciting, yeah, that is. So, um, so welcome. Um, then I should have a second poll. Hold on a second. Oh, I don't think the second one, is, oh, I'm sorry. And then we do already have the results of the, sorry about that, the results of the other poll. And that looks like we have a majority of folks calling from, oh, Oahe, I think we met Oahu. Um, a few from Kauai and Maui, and look at that, quite a few from the continent, including our um, Alaska and Puerto Rico. So thank you so much for joining us, everybody. There are a few folks that could not join us today, but wanted to share um, their words and spirits. So I think the next slide is from our Lieutenant Governor, Josh Green. So I actually got a, a text from Lieutenant Governor this morning regretting that he could not join us, uh, but he was with us from our launch of our hepatitis elimination strategy planning this time last year. Um, and as you see, um, he also um, wrote us a, a letter that you'll see in the plan um, and has been really committed um, even before becoming our Lieutenant Governor. Um, he is an emergency room physician, um, has seen hepatitis firsthand um, and has been one of our biggest allies at Hep Free Hawaii. So really want to thank Lieutenant Governor Green for his ongoing support uh, and also for ensuring that this is uh, July 28th today is, an, is Hepatitis Day in Hawaii, but also it also is also Hepatitis Elimination Day in Hawaii, thanks to Lieutenant Governor Green. So we're really grateful again for his support and many of you may know he actually got tested for hepatitis C on television with us um, this last year. This actually was before 
um, the launch of the elimination campaign, but so wanted to break the stigma that he did the rapid, uh, the rapid uh, test on, on TV um, and really encourage people to get to know their status and we really appreciate him as being one of our champions. Uh, next, thanks Thaddeus. A long-term champion, especially those of you on the continent know that our Senator Maisie Hirono has been a long-term champion of hepatitis. She has spearheaded many of the Dear Colleague letters um, sent out to her colleagues in the Senate asking for hepatitis appropriations and for support for hepatitis at the highest levels of government. She has made herself available whenever the, the Hawaii contingent makes it to Washington DC to meet with us in person. Uh, and again, has always ensured that hepatitis has been visible uh, and encouraged her colleagues to do the same. Uh, we regret that she could not join us today, but again, she did share her letter. Uh, and we had a video to share with you, but unfortunately, because of technical difficulties, we are unable to share it. Um, this was a video that she shared several years ago uh, when we had hepatitis on the Hill, and I think we have some of our colleagues here um, that spearheaded that in Washington, welcoming people um, and also giving props specifically to Hep Free Hawaii um, as obviously her local state's contingent fighting to eliminate hepatitis. Um, I happened to run into the senator in the airport um, a couple of years later, um, and I wouldn't believe that she would remember us, but she did. And she's like, so how's that hepatitis elimination going there? And what do you need from us? So she continues to be a, a steady champion, and we're really grateful for her ongoing work nationwide, um, especially because of the disproportionate ways that hepatitis B have affected the Asian American Pacific Islander and Native Hawaiian community. And of course, um, finally, Senator Schatz has always been a champion, uh, particularly uh, Senator Schatz uh, more recently has um, ensured that, uh, people, that people's voices with hepatitis are heard. Again, he's been part of the um, national conversation joining uh, Senator Hirono in calling to his colleagues. And again, has always made himself available to meet with us when we are in DC to talk about hepatitis appropriations on a national level, um, as well as here in Hawaii, whenever he's back home, um, his heart is in the nonprofit and health communities and has met with us to hear our concerns um, and has particularly ensured that when there's a response to the opioid epidemic that hepatitis dollars were involved as well. So while those three and all of our um, champions um, legislatively could not be here today, we want to really thank them for their ongoing efforts both in Hawaii and on the continent to ensure that we get the awareness and resources we need to eliminate hepatitis not here not just here alone in the islands but nationwide just to go up, um, through our history a bit so Hep Free Hawaii is nine years old uh, Thaddeus and I started Hep Free Hawaii in 2011 as a public-private partnership uh, we started um, gathering partner agencies, and now nine years later, we have almost 100 partner agencies, many of you who are here on line with us today. Um, and we have had a wide variety of activities over the past nine years. I just wanna share a few of them with you. And again, Hep Free Hawaii is proudly sponsored by the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center. So uh, I would love to know, I would love if any of your founding folks are here. We, I, we started in April of 2011. Um, and really, um, after the American Liver Foundation left our state, we felt a real need to get together and look to places um, on the continent like San Francisco and elsewhere who were really getting around for hep hepatitis B elimination. So we're really proud that when we launched right from the beginning, the group said, we're not just going to be hep B free, we want to be hep free, hep B and C. And we're really proud to say today that as far as we know, we're the first strategy to launch that's inclusive of he um, viral hepatitis A, B, and C. And while we know lots of areas are doing great work across the spectrum, we're really grateful that right from the beginning, we saw Hep Free as an inclusive way to address hepatitis. Um, and so uh, we um, have been uh, doing social media, though that's much um, Thaddeus. We really appreciate all of you that follow us on social media and particularly with our Take That Hepatitis campaign. Um, we have now gone through a couple rebrandings, as you saw early on in 2015. Uh, I mean, and early on we had one logo and now uh, we have a new logo that came out a few years ago. Um, and we have a new website that if you haven't seen it, we're really proud of it. 
Most recently, we have realigned with the Hawaii Opioid Initiative, and we're really proud that is and I are co-chairs of, of work group number four. And part of linking and syncing and intersectionality is um, ensuring things like now hepatitis is in our statewide opioid plan. Um, we're really thankful for our HEP United colleagues on the line and all of the great work they've done. They have supported us um, and helped us get work in multiple languages, our Micronesian education program um, in Kenson and Rensley, as well as ensuring that I believe we also had a, a, a micro elimination project on the neighbor islands to help eliminate hepatitis B on Kauai. So we really hope that uh, for those of you that this is your first time or whether you've been an old hat, that you decide to join us so that the next timeline we do, you'll see some of your efforts here um, and really get to see all the ways that we continue to try to build upon community, be visible and show that there is a way to eliminate hepatitis. Um, and so on that, I'm gonna turn it over to Thaddeus to really take us through how we have been doing this elimination planning um, but really appreciate all you being online today and thank you for being a part of our history and a part of our future. Together, we will eliminate hepatitis by 2030. Thank you. Thanks, Heather. And we're just so excited that so many of you have joined us today uh, to learn about our, our really community-driven plan that we started um, nine years ago, I would say, is actually when we started elimination planning, right, Heather, in a sense. Yeah. Um, and it took that nine years to build the network of care and support and aloha that allowed us to um, accomplish this or create this strategy in one year. So um, before we move forward, I just want to highlight, you know, a lot of people are a little confused about the term elimination. So this is what um, we want to just acknowledge. This is from the World Health Organization. So when we talk about elimination, we're actually talking about um, the time in the future before 2030 um, in Hawaii that new cases of uh, hepatitis become zero or at least really low um, and that really low is left up to the communities according to the WHO. So in a sense that means that we will continue to figure out ways to prevent new infections and to care for people who are living with hepatitis um, and I think that hasn't really changed at all since we first started, but it's a good reminder of what this means and what we're doing. This is our process. So as I mentioned, uh, and as Heather mentioned, we started nine years ago and it took those nine years of community building, of trust building, of networking, and really creating a culture and a community of hepatitis in Hawaii that allowed us, again, to create a strategy in one year. So last uh, World Hepatitis Day, so one year ago, we started the formal planning process. We had about 45 of you. Uh, many of you, I think, were at that meeting in person back when we had in-person meetings, along with uh, Lieutenant Governor Josh Green to officially kick off this process. And since then, in that one year, we've had over 24 formal meetings, not including our informal talk stories, our you know time at the syringe exchange, our holding space with our Micronesian brothers and sisters and non gender uh, gender nonconforming peoples, um, and over that year we were able to talk with over 160 people who provided some uh, measure of uh, feedback, insight, um, or suggestion for this strategy, and we really wanted to honor. Uh, participation at any level. So we scheduled things on weekends, we scheduled things after work, we um, sat in community spaces, we made Zoom calls available at lunchtime, we did everything we could to get people comfortable enough to share their story and share their voices. So um, we did as much as we could and for those of you who participated, we really thank you again for your participation because this would be nothing without the 160 plus people and more that um, were involved in this process over the past year. So through this process, through talking story, and for those of you who work in community, you know how messy this can get. A lot of talking and a lot of negotiating and really listening. And so through this process, we came up with five priority areas for elimination in Hawaii. This is our wheel of priorities here. Some of you might already recognize it, but if you look at it, we'll start with this um, in the upper right. And if we go down, we have the three A's. So our triple A's of awareness, access, and advocacy. And crossing the three A's are equity in everything we do and data for decision making. And when we talk about data, we're not only talking about numbers and epidemiology, but we're talking about stories and lived experience as equally valid measures of data. 
So what I'm going to do now is like I'm going to stop the uh, PowerPoint and just walk you through the plan itself or the strategy rather. So you can kind of see um, what it looks like. So let me just pull that up for you. And at this point, I also want to thank Jasmine, who's on the call, for making this gorgeous, as you folks will see. And those of you who already got the sneak peek of it, uh, you already know how beautiful it is. So thank you, Jasmine, for that. Yes, thank you, Jasmine. So this is the uh, front page. So we're going to, you can already see, um, we're very centered around Hawaii and the space and the visuals of Hawaii. This is what Heather already set the intention for. So in a sense, our strategy is like a conversation. And we always open our conversations by acknowledging the people that we are working for, with, and among, and also the space we're in. So we, walk, we worked with Uncle Raymond to pick a, a an appropriate native Hawaiian proverb to open the space in a sense. So thank you, Heather, for sharing that earlier. I can't print it, I can't speak this either, so I'll just refer to that. Um, these are the proclamations that Heather referred to today as Hawaii Hepatitis Elimination Day. So we thank our governor and lieutenant governor. This is what Heather had shown earlier, our, our legislative champions who are really helping us uh, to continue this fight at not only the local but the federal level and even the global level. And I'll show you this afterwards, but we know you don't always have a lot of time. So we created a one page version of this 47 page strategy. Um, so you can look at it and share easily, but also for our community members who are not public health oriented or who are not savvy in this way. Again, we wanna make it so that everyone can engage with this strategy. So I'll show you what that um, one pager looks like. A table of contents. This is not an executive summary, but this is our community summary. Again, we really try to make it so that the language and the look and the feel is more community oriented. And so you could see it here already highlights the things that uh, our community valued. That's collaboration, that's nimbleness, so that we can respond to changes. Like Heather mentioned, you know, considering racial equity and considering COVID, we really have to be able to be nimble in these times. And we're eliminating hepatitis A, B, and C. We looked at many plans and we highlight them here, um, but we also really rely on our community members to, and our stakeholders and everyone involved to create this wheel of priorities. I'll point out here too, we have quotes throughout the strategy, again, to highlight the importance of community voice through this process and through implementation. So this is not a Department of Health document, even though we are involved. This is a community document driven by community voice. And we are just really here to open the, clear the path for community to move forward. So what's happening in Hawaii? So those of you who may, uh, work in Hawaii know that we don't have surveillance data in Hawaii, unfortunately, for hepatitis, but we do have data. And so like Heather was mentioning earlier, we do have things that we need to work on, but we also have our own strengths and resiliencies. So we know that we do have data that liver cancer is uh, one of the highest in the nation in Hawaii, and that viral hepatitis causes most of that liver cancer. Um, we know that it affects multiple communities, so we highlight them here. And this is quantitative data, research data, peer review data. So we know what we have to work with our houseless communities, our sexual and gender minority communities, people who are Asian Pacific Islanders, especially if they're foreign born, our native Hawaiian communities, and pretty much any adult according to CDC recommendations for hep C, but also people who inject or use drugs and people who have been or are currently incarcerated. So with that in mind, we right next to our data section, we have our local people telling local stories. These are six local storytellers who have been affected by hepatitis and a quote from each of them with a link to their story on YouTube. Again, really just showing that this is what drives our work and that we are community driven and values driven. Um, so this, I just wanna acknowledge Paige, Kenson and Rensley, um, Jade, Peter, um, Stacia and Eddie for sharing their stories. And here, because community said, um, recommended this, we responded. So they said, we want you to state that you will support these specific communities. So we have this box on its own page saying that we commit to working with these communities who are affected by hepatitis. Um, Heather went over our history and she showed our beautiful timeline. Um, so we'll just go, and she went over our values. And again, we state this at the beginning of every meeting now to really make sure that we are values oriented and to allow us to be nimble. We're not holding ourselves to certain metrics if we know that we're moving towards our values. And you'll see that kind of borne out in our, um, our next kind of section. 
there's another quote that you'll see throughout. So this is the process which I mentioned already, and um, this is the wheel of priorities which you've seen. I will point out here that this is the this is how we, the again with talking story over many months. This is what uh, the community decided. We will identify five priority areas, and under each priority area, we have multiple directions. So we don't call them goals; we call them directions because it just points us where we want to go. And under each of those are opportunities. And this allows us to be nimble. So we borrowed from the idea of micro elimination, which again is peer reviewed, it's um, you know, data oriented, but it's the idea that each community knows itself the best and can come up with its own interventions. And so we're really there to support. And if it doesn't work, that's fine. We'll move on quickly, but it allows us to have multiple activities and multiple things happening so we can stay nimble and see what works. So this isn't a complete list of opportunities, but this is just a highlight um, because we want the strategy to be a living document and we want to be able to try new things and move on if it doesn't work. So I'll go over each uh, priority area, but I won't uh, go into detail, just kind of highlight them for you. So strategy area number one is awareness and education. So you can see our four directions, our digital presence, cultural engagement, being a hub for expertise and healthcare education. And next to it are our micro elimination opportunities. So opportunities that our community came up with that might work, that we might already do, or that we want to try. And again, this isn't a complete list, but it's ideas to kind of generate action. Um, next is access to services, priority two. And this is fairly straightforward. We're looking at directions around immunizations, testing, linkage to care, treatment, and prescriber capacity. And with that, we have our micro-elimination opportunities as well. Priority area three, which is where I'm so grateful to have Heather as co-director, because she's so great at this, advocacy at all levels. So not just legislative, but policy at you know a substance treatment center, right? Things like that. So health department capacity, policy integration, insurance coverage, community advocacy, not surprisingly, and provider advocacy. And you could see our opportunities are here. Uh, priority area four is a cross-cutting one, so it crosses all those three, and that's equity in everything we do. And our directions are always about shared leadership, people come first, stigma reduction, and data evaluation. So uh, someone once told me, don't get mad, get data, uh, but may maybe nowadays it's get mad and get data, so we'll continue to do that. Um, and this is our directions here. And then our last priority area is data for decision making. And so um, you can see it's, it's again straightforward, but I think it's really important. Data to action. So creating local care cascades that, are, that use the same metrics across each community so we can kind of compare. Cross-cutting evaluation. Survey, building a better surveillance infrastructure. As I mentioned, we don't actually have funded surveillance right now. And then equity metrics. So tying in equity as a data metric. And these are some of the opportunities here. Finally, um, our, in a sense, this conversation, the strategy document closes where uh, opened with our community. So sometimes Mahalo or the thank you page is kind of an afterthought, but for us, it was very, very important. We, we actually spent a lot of time on making this look pretty and accessible. So our Mahalo page, because we're so invested in the people that contribute. So not only our steering committee, so I'll thank Heather and our clinical experts, Dr. Naoki Sai, Dr. Christina Wong, who's actually out on the streets right now, providing wound care and hepatitis care for people. Um, Alan Kot Alan, Kota, and Kenson uh, for the programs of hepatitis care coordination and Micronesian education for liver wellness, as well as Hep B um, care coordination. David Shaku, thank you so much for your support for Alan. And then our past and our historical program leads. So Sean, Shawnee, um, Austin, Marsha, Kendra, Jane, David, but Ball, you know, these people really helped us move along and everyone contributes um, to our history. And of course, thank you to Jasmine, as I call her Jazz, uh, for making this so beautiful. And for Nina Green, I don't know if she's on, but she's gonna make us, uh, turn, help us turn this into a, like a mini website so that you can click more um, and interact with this more. And then our storytellers, I'll mention them again, Stacia, Peter, and Nga, um, Jade and Max, Paige Britt, um, Kenson and Rensley and Eddie for your stories, your bravery, your humor, and for just being so passionate about the work. 
Um, and for anyone who contributed at all in this past year, in any capacity, we thank you. So we listed you here. Um, so many of you will see yourselves on this list, again, because we really value our community and you really drive the work we do. Um, I will also add for those who cannot be named, for those who chose not to be named, and for those who we want to protect their anonymity. So people at our syringe exchange did give feedback. Um, and so we, rather than, you know, make them feel uncomfortable by naming them, we just want to honor them too. And we close this document, how we opened it, like I mentioned, by dedicating it to the people we know and love who are affected by hepatitis in our communities. Um, and of course, this, I, Heather and I, this is the first, uh, this is the addendum, the only addendum in this, but it's our original logic model. So a little throwback and of course our contact information. So I'm gonna turn it back to Heather, but you know, this is a, a labor of community love and we really appreciate everyone contributing and being here and holding a space with us today. So I'm gonna turn it back to you, Heather, and I'll pull up the slides. Thank you, Thaddeus. It's been such a joy to partner and walk alongside Thaddeus and everybody else over these past nine years. And I really appreciate you throwing in that logic model. That was my first attempt <laughs> when we first th uh, started Hep Free Hawaii and how we got our first funding, actually. So I appreciate that. Um, as you see, there are so many people's fingers and footsteps that uh, help create this strategy. And again, we're so grateful. Uh, but we wanted to open it up to all of you. I saw one question already from Tertia, um, which I'll answer in a moment. Um, but if you, the rest of you could, uh, we're having, uh, we can't really have the hands raised. So if you have any questions, if you could put them into the chat or any comments, and then we will facilitate and um, do some talk story, as we say in Hawaii. So the first question that we had was, uh, are copies going to be available? Uh, and so we are uh, going to provide the link to make your own copies. However, um, H3RC will be making some more formal copies. Um, and so you can just reach out to us if you want us to mail you one, but we will get some nice bound ones as well. Um, if you want your official copy, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Um, let's see what other questions folks may have about the plan. Oh, a great question from Lauren. Uh, thank you, Lauren, one of our great advocates. Um, so do you have funding in the state budget? Uh, so very little, um, and this is a good, I can answer this because uh, um, you know, Daddy has worked for the Department of Health. So last I knew um, there was about, was it about $75,000 in the state budget for all uh, adult hepatitis? Is that still the amount Thaddeus or has it changed? Yes, that's okay. the same. Yeah, so, um, all, so what we have in Hawaii is Thaddeus is funded physician from the Center for Disease Control, and we're really grateful to the Harm Reduction Services branch of the health department. That's where Thaddeus um, and the, the adult or the hepatitis prevention coordinator is located. Um, but besides Thaddeus' position, he has that 75,000 that is comes every year, um, but that's it. And that is why, uh, that's statewide. Um, and so that is why we have, uh, there's no hepatitis surveillance formal program that's funded. Uh, we do have a pretty remote hepatitis B perinatal program, but it, with a little bit of state money, um, but yeah, 75,000. And so our job um, this year is actually, we had had um, a potential hearing and a, and a bill set up in the Hawaii legislature before COVID hit um, to be able to have a, a briefing on the data and try to get some commitment from the Hawaii legislature. Because of COVID, that was canceled. Uh, and so we do plan on re-submitting um, that, that reso and actually a bill to try to get more appropriation. Though, of course, this is a hard year to do that. But, I mean, look at the hepatitis A alone was at third over a 300% increase. Um, we saw that in houseless folks on the continent and here in Hawaii, we're a, it's a blessing we haven't had a hep A outbreak. So uh, we're hopeful that we'll get more um, and that's why advocacy is a big part of our strategy is that we need y'all's um, voices here in Hawaii to help demand that more money get to the health department. Can you imagine what Thaddeus would do with more money? Look what he's done with $75,000. He's created a statewide continuum of care and all these amazing things. And so if we can get more money, especially to get what's called a cascade or a surveillance to have to understand our disease burden and then get more resources for the testing, immunization and treatment. Um, we'll be on our way. So great question, Lauren. I don't know, uh, Thaddeus, did you want to add it all to? 
Yeah, thanks. And thanks, Lauren. Hi, Lauren. Um, and thanks, Heather. I think something that's really been powerful, too, in this regard is that while there's financial capital, we've been really adept, as Heather knows, because um, we've done it for nine years at building relationship capital. And I think that's how we've been able to be successful. So whereas um, we might not have more than 75 um, in the community, we do help write grants. We help build relationships. Sometimes we get free vaccines from our partners, things like that. So there are we have figured out ways, but it, it would be nicer to have a, a more stable way of, uh, a sustainable way of kind of keeping our work going. So thank you, Heather. Um, yeah, so thank you. Um, a follow-up question um, uh, is what can folks who don't live in Hawaii, and then I'll get back to yours, um, Tricia, what can folks who don't live in Hawaii do to help? Um, that's a great, that's a great question. Um, so one, um, I think that one is that when there is, um, when there's national things happening, which sometimes there is, whether it's national appropriations or acts, that's definitely a way that you can make sure that your local um, delegation is involved, um, whether that's, you know, signing on to a letter or, you know, voting in the proper way for a bill, that's one way. Um, but even more than that, I think if you do have any relationships with folks in Hawaii, as, as Thaddeus says, it's, it's all relationships. So for example, we had a really good relationship with one of the health chairs, um, and now all of that chairship is going to be changing this next session, and we don't quite know who we're going to get. Um, so, so anytime you have relationships or ways that you know folks in Hawaii, particularly people in the legislature or other stakeholders, that's another way um, to, to, to support us. Um, Thaddeus, how else would you... Um, uh, talk about folks on the continent besides getting involved with things like NVHR or HEPI United, things like that. I th yeah, thanks, Heather. I think um, just becoming a partner agency, it doesn't really require anything other than saying you support our work. And then we can list you on our website and then following us on social media. Um, also, just really reaching out to us if you need help. And we found that's been the, a really great way of building the network of care across the U.S. and actually across the world is just... Um, staying in communication and figuring out things together. And I think through that, uh, we've been able to identify opportunities and make things happen just by, you know, sharing challenges. Yeah, no, thank you. That's, yeah, that's really true. Um, is that, is Diana Pham, is she related to you there, Thaddeus? <laughs> yeah, I thought so. <laughs> that's great. <laughs> thank you for joining us, Diana. Um, we had another question about what's the current rate of hepatitis in Hawaii? Um, and again, because we don't have formalized surveillance, we've had to use estimates and then also use data from people like Dr. Naoki Sai or Dr. Linda Wong and their research. I think we estimate um, about 63,000 um, statewide are impacted by viral hepatitis, but we also think that's undercounted. Um, when you look at some of Dr. Sai's data, for example, when he was doing screening, um, Oh my gosh, Dr. Sai, that was way back now. But when you were doing some of the three for life screenings, um, sometimes he found some, some rates of eight, 10% in some of the pockets in, in Hawaii. So that's one of the reasons why we need better, re better um, surveillance to get those true numbers. That is, how would you add to that as far as our data goes? Uh, no, I, I would agree with everything you said. Um, and when we look at those specific communities that we pointed out earlier, um, you know, they are much higher, like you mentioned. So I know uh, Heather's agency runs the syringe, statewide syringe exchange, and I think the last data was like 60 to 70 percent of participants had hepatitis C. So, Yeah, um, and I would say that one of the groups that we have some of the least data on is our Native Hawaiian communities. Um, and I think that why there's, I have, there hasn't been as much research um, and understanding, and I think that's one area that we really want to know more about. Um, at least according to some of the data we have seen, they seem to have some similar rates um, as some of our Pacific Islander communities. But again, um, we'd, we've only had little pockets of testing. And so we're hoping to be able to get better data as part of this elimination strategy. Um, um, thank you, Alyssa, for, she, Alyssa gave us some kind words about our plan and the integration of social justice and equity. Thank you. Um, and I don't see any other questions. Are there any other thoughts or questions, and maybe I missed one in the chat box. If I did, uh, Jasmine or um, Andrew, please help me out. No, I think you got them all. Okay, oh, so Dr. Sai um, said that he also found that the usually lower risk group has a higher prevalence, so we're all in this together. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Sai. In fact, specifically, I remember him finding in a couple of his research projects that even um, 
folks that might have identified uh, how myself by how the uh, people identify as a Caucasian at a higher rate um, and that may be because of a lot of the inner um, inner people have a lot of, everybody is mixed up here in Hawaii and so you know some of the traditional ways that we look at how disease is may not reflect Hawaii because people um, are so and have been um, you know there's so many ways that people have gotten together and had babies um, and so there's a lot of that kind of mixing and even uh, Dr. Sai if I remember even you were finding sometimes again eight or ten percent in some of these communities that were born in Hawaii. Um, so are we able to do testing during COVID? Yes, we are. We had to have a little bit of hiatus due to lack of PPE and planning, but now I know that we're back up and I believe most of the testing sites are back up. We aren't doing as much testing on the street um, as we were doing um, before COVID, but we are back in and I think we have our first um, treatment candidate during COVID, which we're excited about. So um, I know that many of us are looking towards some of these dried blood spot, dried blood spot testing and other things coming on the horizon to help make testing even more low barrier. Yeah, and I'll add to that uh, what Heather was saying, again, just to speak to how we always try to be nimble and responsive. Um, so, you know, Heather's agency and many others saw the challenges of testing, but also figured out ways to be safe while still providing testing. And we are exploring things like Heather said around dried blood spot testing so that folks don't have to interact directly. They could just do it from their home. And also we just had a conversation with um, the t temporary quarantine isolation center, Heather, t um, yep. for our houses folks with COVID and integrating hep C testing into that facility as well. So again- I'm very excited about, especially because we're the medical unit. So I'm, yeah, I'm very excited about. Uh, again, it's linking and syncing intersectionality. And right now, uh, while well, pre-COVID, we had Alan and our other folks, they were out on the street drawing blood for a confirmatory tests for hepatitis on the street. And we will do, um, do that and take this to the street as much as possible um, and keep integrating it wherever we can. Um, Thaddeus, um, a question from Nikos is, um, would you mind talking a bit about hepatitis B? Um, and uh, specifically ask about um, um, immigrants from Asia and the Pacific when it, when it comes to hepatitis B. Yeah, sure. Thanks, Nico. So we do see um, more hep B, at least in our little um, kind of uh, prog programs that we have at our federally qualified health centers. Um, we do see higher rates of hepatitis B among our people who are immigrants, migrants, or refugees from Asia and the Pacific, um, especially folks from Marshall Islands or um, Chuk. And that's why we're so proud and honored and grateful to work with Kenson and Rensley, who really um, want to make sure that their communities stay healthy and safe. Um, so we're always trying to work with that community as well. And that's why we also work around a lot of uh, stuff intersectionally around immigrant, migrant, and refugee healthcare rights and access to things like MedQuest if you are um, part of the COFA, you know, from the COFA nations and things like that. So thank you, uh, Nico. It's a great question. Okay, I don't see any other questions in the chat. I'll just give anybody a last minute um, if you have anything else that you want to share or any feedback um, on the plan as well. Okay. Just thank you very much. It's Irina. Thank you very much for <laughs> this. It's such an accomplishment. So great document. Congratulations. Thank you. You know, again, this was the community's work. Uh, and I, I have to say it also was um, particularly Thaddeus's vision and commitment to ensuring that this was a community document. And so let's move on to the hard part, actually, because the hard part's not done. The hard part is actually just beginning, which is where do we go from here? And how do you all continue to support us um, in helping eliminate hepatitis, either in your own area, but in, in here in here in Hawaii? So. Um, there's some ways uh, that we, um, hold on, I'm trying to pull up my poll here. So we wanna hear from you in this call to action. Um, as you see here, we have a wide variety of ways that you can support us. Thank you for sharing this strategy via your social networks and sending the link out far and wide. Again, we're happy to mail you um, a hard copy if you wanna follow up with me. We're gonna need more boots on the ground than ever, again, to actually give this plan and strategy legs to make, and to actually start doing the work and implementing these micro-elimination strategies. So perhaps you wanna use up one of these particularly intrigued you. Um, and as we move into implementation, we'll be having implementation groups continue where our strategy groups left off. And, and if you're a doer, 
um, and like to get things done, we want, we, we need you more than ever. If you're feeling like your capacity is somewhat limited, at least follow, follow us on social media. Thank you. We really appreciate that both um, HEP Free Hawaii and the Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction Center. Uh, and um, we always appreciate the opportunity, especially if you are in Washington or ever interface with our um, our national folks, especially Senator Schatz or Senator Hirono, give them a shout out. Thank you, Senator Hirono, for being such a champion. Uh, locally, if you ever have an opportunity, thank you for them again. Um, and hopefully we'll continue to find our local champion. Um, and if you're not a partner agency, help us get to 100. We want to celebrate 100 partners and are really looking forward to doing that. So if you could take a moment, I'm putting a poll here up on the screen. This is anonymous, so it won't be like Daddy's not going to hunt you down and, 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 and ask you where, you're, <laughs> where the work is. But we do really need you to continue to do this. Again, we have the tools. We have the power. We have the almost 80 of you here today, this dedication. So how will you, what are you going to do? What's your call to action? How can you support us in making Hawaii HEP free by 2030? And especially that those of you that want to do advocacy with me here in Hawaii, we're going to need a contingent of us to really work with our new chairs, um, get our hearing, and then really hold their feet to the fire. Even though this is a really tough time, we also know that the last thing we need is a hepatitis A outbreak on top of all of this, or to see um, transmissions of hepatitis C when people may relapse or inject um, because of what's going on, or people not getting to the doctor in time um, with hepatitis B and not getting their cancer screening. Like more than ever, we know that COVID is making life even more challenging for our communities living with hepatitis. So I'm gonna give you a couple of minutes to, or a couple of seconds more to put in and let's see what you put in here. And at this point, I'll add that Heather and I are really easy to work with, even though we talk fast <laughs> and a lot. <laughs> and we always welcome collaboration. Thank so, you. yeah. So, we, I think a lot of folks, um, it's helpful for us to collaborate with you, but we hope that it helps you as well. So, we, ho we always try to make sure that everyone gets something out of a collaboration with us. We do. And we also, we're willing to work with levels of collaboration. If all you can do is kind of show up and be there, we love it. Um, and if you want to do more, there's lots of opportunities and no shame. We're, we're, we're grateful for any opportunity. So look at this, Thaddeus, 73%. So three out of four people on here said that they would share this with somebody else. Thank you. Um, uh, 17 of you said that you will email us to be part of our implementation groups. So hooray. And again, with these micro elimination strategies, there's lots of opportunities uh, to get involved. Um, and then look at that, uh, social media, again, 68% that is, will follow us if they haven't already on HEP Free Hawaii. And look at you, um, at least uh, those of you that aren't partner agencies, look, we'll get closer to that 100. Uh, we should do a prize for, you know how they do it yeah. at grocery store, you're like this special. We'll give us a prize to the 100th partner agency to, to join HEP Free Hawaii. And again, there's no cost. It's just saying that you believe in, in eliminating hepatitis and allow, uh, and, um, and you, we put you on our website. And then if you're willing to, to, to put our logo um, you know, on yours. And then finally, it looks like a, um, one in five of you are willing to email the senators or lieutenant governor and thank them for their support. Please do show them that their letters make a difference, um, that their voices make a difference, and that even though they couldn't join today, that their spirit was with us. That inspires me. Yeah, Thaddeus, look at the involvement from our group. It's super exciting. Thanks everyone for, for committing to that. Or, and we can't follow you up with you, so don't worry. Yeah, we don't know. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So in closing, um, I want to, again, particularly give a shout out to our founders. I believe Dr. Sai is on the line with us. I don't believe Dr. Wong could join us, but she was the other um, start of our medical team. Um, uh, and uh, thank you so much for being with us the last nine years, Dr. Sai, and for continuing to support all of the incredible work. Um, as many of you may know, Dr. Sai actually volunteers his time with uh, patients with Hep C here at our own clinic, and we're so grateful for you. Uh, thank you to Jasmine Umeno for uh, just that she created this beautiful plan and these documents and worked with Thaddeus ongoing and to make it really, um, I believe, not only beautiful, but practical and easy to um, kind of consume. 
Um, and I just want to give a thank to the rest of the uh, Hawaii Health and Harm Reduction staff briefly, uh, Andrew, David, Alan, just for all the support that you have given, particularly Thaddeus and I, um, during this process. Andrew, you've been with us the whole way, making sure people were fed and, um, you know, got to the right place through all these meetings and just thank you all. Um, and lastly, you know, Thaddeus is your highness of, 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 of hepatitis, but more than that, he is, uh, he inspires me every day. Um, I can't think of a better partner to have done this with the past nine years. And I just really, I hope you all will join me in thanking Thaddeus Pham, not only as the hepatitis coordinator for the health department, but truly the champion that has brought us all together over the past year. So uh, mahalo Thaddeus. Oh, thank you, Heather. And I love having you as a partner in crime. I mean, partner in public health. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so thank you all for today. Um, I don't know if Thaddeus, do you have any last words you wanna share? Um, no, just thanks everyone. Please do reach out to us. And then um, as, we're, as you're leaving today, um, we just hope that you think about, you know, how you can do this in your communities and um, how this might be adaptable for the communities that you serve, because I think, um, you know, by lifting up all communities, we can ensure that our communities here also get, um, get what they need. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you everybody. Please stay safe, stay well. Aloha.